It's been about two years since a pair of PepsiCo major events caused the great energy drink DSD shakeup. So why are they again at the heart of another shock to the growing beverage category? If you're a longtime community member, you likely remember the super popular piece of content that I created about two years ago that was titled Energy Drink DSD Shakeup of 2020. This will be a continuation of that content, so if you need to refresh yourself on the previous content, I'll make it easy for you by popping it up right here, and I'll also leave the link in this content's description. During the first four months of 2020, a huge tectonic shift occurred within the energy drink space. No, it wasn't from what you're thinking, but caused by two PepsiCo market moves. The first was on March 11th, 2020, when PepsiCo announced it would acquire Rockstar Energy for $3.85 billion. PepsiCo and Rockstar Energy had a long history together. The two companies signed a 10-year exclusive distribution contract in 2009. While PepsiCo helped Rockstar Energy grow into a brand that was teetering on billion-dollar annual revenue status, growth had stagnated over the most recent years. Because of that poor recent performance, the exclusivity clause with Rockstar Energy then became a major problem for PepsiCo. It stopped them from being able to work with the energy drink brand that just reshuffled the top three energy drink brands in the U.S. for the first time since 2004. Bang Energy was basically lightning in a can. This was peak Bang Energy growth and PepsiCo wanted a piece of it. How do you do that? You need to clear the Rockstar Energy roadblock. With the mergers and acquisitions transaction taking care of that issue, PepsiCo quickly moved to sign an exclusive distribution deal with Bang Energy that happened on April 28th, 2020. Here's why this move absolutely rocked the energy drinks market. There hadn't been an energy drink company that stayed 100% independent and reached $1 billion in annual revenue like Bang Energy did. This was a true unicorn occurrence. Bang Energy had built a piecemealed direct store delivery DSD network that could generate a billion dollars in sales. That's a lot of DSD partners across the country that would be now losing Bang Energy on its trucks with its transition to the PepsiCo distribution system. These DSD partners would be forced to replace Bang Energy with something similar. At the time, I stated that the biggest beneficiaries would be in this order, Celsius Holdings, C4 Energy, and Alani New. This is exactly what ended up happening, with Celsius Holdings turning into an absolute rocket ship. They went from a run rate of just around $100 million to now one that's over $500 million. And I don't want to totally take away the successes of Celsius because I think they have a great product, marketing strategy, and team over there, and they would have grown their sales regardless. But jumping from 100 DSD partners to almost 300 in a short time is largely attributable to the Bang Energy PepsiCo deal reshuffling the DSD landscape. Additionally, though C4 Energy and Alani New are both privately held and I don't have the DSD partnership statistics readily available to me, the scan data does prove that they saw similarly elevated performance results during the last two years. I also mentioned Ghost Energy would have massive success in the market, but here's kind of the interesting point about that prediction. The product didn't even officially launch yet when I made that statement in the August 2020 content. Because of that timing, I stated Ghost Energy would only get minimal positive effects from the Bang Energy exit. Now, I went with minimal for that word instead of none because a lot of the DSD partners that Bang Energy was exiting from were AB InBev houses. And AB InBev just so happens to be the joint venture partner on the Ghost Energy brand. 
Fast forward to right now, and Ghost Energy has become the fastest growing energy drink in the American market. While it's always great to reminisce on how well my past predictions ended up playing out in the market, I wanted to shift this content into what the recent news announcement between Bang Energy and PepsiCo means to the energy drinks market. According to a Bang Energy press release on June 22nd, 2022, Effective immediately, both parties will enthusiastically and strategically cooperate in a nationwide joint effort to transition from PepsiCo distribution to Bang Energy's new DSD partners. This officially puts an early end to one of the most toxic relationships in recent beverage industry history, one that underperformed from the very beginning and sapped Bang Energy of its historic growth momentum. So, now what? Does everything that happened in the last two years just go back to normal? Well, if you haven't learned anything about the last two years, there's a new normal that we all need to get comfortable with now. Fact is, Bang Energy is still the third largest energy drink brand with 7.3% dollar share of a very important beverage category. Those types of free agents just don't come around ever. So it's no surprise that many of the same DSD partners that helped Bang generate its billion dollar momentum will be back in the mix once again. According to Jack Oak, the CEO of Bang Energy, the company has existing contracts with roughly 252 distributors, many of whom are already carrying non-Bang VPX products like Redline, Meltdown, booze, hydration, sensation, and a few others. But it's presumed that the brand will no longer be able to command exclusivity at these DSD distributors that stocked offerings with other energy brands once Bang Energy exited. Do you kick out Celsius Holdings that's grown immensely in the last two years? No. Do you kick out C4 Energy that has had impressive growth? No, and does many of the AB InBev DSD partners allocate less resources to the growing Ghost Energy brand? Hell no. What Bang Energy did in the late 2010s totally disrupted the energy drinks market, and that evolution picked up steam in the last two years. With the creation of the performance energy subcategory and massive flavor innovation, it broadened the energy drinks market by attracting more health conscious consumers. As a result, the larger market size and new entrants created further product fragmentation and increased discoverability, leading to less brand loyalty and further brand proliferation. You also have a continuation of the energy everything convergence that I've talked about for years between like the coffee RTDs and energy drinks. And I won't dive deeper into that concept again right now, but brand names will show up in this last section. So I wanted to at least mention it. So what's the predicted strategic plan now for the biggest energy drink portfolios after the Bang and Pepsi Co split? Let's start at the biggest global player in the energy drinks market and the one that continues to seem content with staying in its lane, and that is Red Bull. I don't think anything changes substantially with Red Bull that could be seen as complacency or that they are in a world of their own and they don't need to look for maybe like splashy mergers and acquisition targets or some kind of like massive strategic transformation. Next up would be Monster Beverage Corporation. And since the non-compete with the Coca-Cola company has now expired, Monster has been active recently with being rumored in merger talks with the beverage, alcohol beverage portfolio, Constellation Brands, and its acquisition of Canarchy Craft Brewery Collective. Since I mentioned the Coca-Cola company, I still don't think they're content with only having a minority interest in Monster Beverage Corporation. The absolute flop of Coke Energy still stings, but 
They are kind of too debt leveraged, in my opinion. Right now, with the $5.6 billion acquisition of Body Armor Sports Drink, they can't acquire or develop any energy drink brands with the exclusivity clause in the Monster Beverage ownership. So, until they can either renegotiate that contract or acquire them, they will only have coffee RTD options if they wanted more exposure to the energy everything category. Let's shift to Keurig Dr. Pepper, and this is kind of an interesting beverage portfolio in the energy everything world because they are weak on the energy drink side, but super strong on the coffee side. The energy drink trio of Zyance, High Drive, and Venom isn't going to move the needle. The distribution agreement with Adrenaline Shock is showing signs of improvement, but the aggressiveness in the national rollout isn't anything to write home about. KDP recently said they have about $20 billion in mergers and acquisitions capacity, and I believe they should utilize a chunk of that to acquire an energy drink brand. Shifting to the two beer portfolios, Molson Coors seems content with their partnership in the Rocks energy drink brand Zoa Energy and coffee RTD company La Colombe Coffee Roasters. On the other hand, AB InBev seems to have gotten a major injection of energy from this Bang Energy PepsiCo breakup. They are going to reacquire distribution rights to Bang Energy. Also, Ghost Energy has become a major force in a very short time. They also have invested and distribute Super Coffee that's grown like a weed in the last few years and just recently launched their own energy drink. <laughs> kind of cough, cough, that launch is kind of the personification of this energy everything movement. If any significant market move does happen with AB InBev, the most likely one would be buying out the JV interest of Ghost Energy. And I left the most interesting for last. So what the heck does PepsiCo do now? They lost Bang Energy, Rockstar Energy was never predicted to regain life, but it's slowly falling down the ranks, even with a brand product refresh. Rise Energy, I mean Mountain Dew Energy, was terribly executed. Mountain Dew Game Fuel has been a weak effort from the start and needs reworked bad if they hope to garner any of the esports attention in the future. The only bright spot of the energy everything category has been their partnership with Starbucks. What does this kind of all mean? PepsiCo needs to get aggressive with mergers and acquisitions in the energy drink space. They need to acquire Celsius Holdings or Nutribolt, aka C4 Energy or Alani New. PepsiCo is really the best partner for the two supplement brands turned beverage companies because they already own Cytosport and Gatorade that do have powdered SKU, so they have at least some understanding of how to run that business. So I just want to end on some quick final thoughts. The Bang Energy PepsiCo breakup will end up stimulating another round of musical chairs in the lucrative, still growing beverage sector. This game could cause some of the smaller, like upstart brands, to lose DSD partnerships when the mid level players look to shift out of crowded trucks and seek more attention from other distributors. We also have Bang Energy reportedly in the middle of negotiations to sell a minority share. It's said that a few dozen investors and strategic partners are currently expressing interest. As I always say, the energy drink category is one of the most interesting and exciting CBG categories, and you just never know what's going to happen next. If you enjoyed this YouTube video, hit the like button to support me. Also, help me get to my short-term goal of 2,000 subscribers by hitting the subscribe button. I'd love to see you join me on this journey, but we need to fix the fact that slightly less than 70% of you that are watching this YouTube video right now are not subscribed to my channel and that makes me extremely sad. But I do wanna thank you for tuning in and I'll see you on the next one.